It's always nice when the vehicles that I can bring up in this series are also ones which have a more special place for me personally. Because, of course, as with any subject, you can always talk more passionately about something which you have more love for. You can talk about things clinically in a very objective way, such as with movie reviews, for instance, but when you talk about stuff subjectively, but keeping the facts in mind, it can often come across with a lot more passion. That's why certain teachers, for instance, at a school when you're a kid, will probably stand out more. Now, for me, this car easily has that more subjective flavour for me, because I'm a huge Skoda fan. That may sound like a weird thing to say, but I've always loved Skoda as a brand, at least as far as their more recent years go, so not always, always as far as my life has gone, but not all Skodas, of course, because they kind of had a renaissance thanks to Volkswagen, and now they are much more impressive cars than many people originally thought that they were. But the funny thing is, although they had a certain reputation back in the day, when it came to motorsport, they didn't really deserve to have a bad reputation because they went rallying, they went road racing, and this, the 733 Spider 2 from 1975, is a race car that you probably haven't heard of, not too surprisingly, but those who have heard of it probably quite like it. It's a car which has a lot of attitude, it's a great looking little machine, and unless you knew it was a Skoda, or at least Skoda was written on the car, which of course it is, you probably wouldn't even know that it was one. It looks more like something like a tiny little Ferrari. I mean, it's red even, so that doesn't exactly help. When I think of Skoda, I often think of green, so it would be cool if it were, but obviously this is way back in 75, so Skoda's brand image was nothing like it is now. Now for those who are unfamiliar with the car, which is most people, what does it offer? And also, being as it is a race car, what did it achieve? Because surely a car like this could be some kind of flash in the pan thing, where it pops up, doesn't really accomplish anything, and just disappears into some Skoda museum. Well, it's actually quite a spicy little machine. It's got a 2.0-litre single overhead cam engine, mid-mounted, as is pretty obvious, rear-wheel drive, it only puts out 180 horsepower, which is probably quite a lot less than you're expecting. It looks easily like a three or 400 horsepower car, but thanks to the fact that it barely weighs more than an F1 car at 585 kilos, and the performance is actually very good, 0 to 60 in 4 seconds dead, and a top speed of about 150 miles per hour from that kind of engine. That's remarkably good for a 180 horsepower car to be that fast. It's impressive, as I said, put simply, it's very impressive. Now, in terms of what this car achieved, it didn't race that much. In fact, the car only finished two events. But here's the thing. It only entered two events, so it has a 100% finish ratio. Now that in itself, although it may not sound impressive, to anyone who knows what kind of win to loss to DNF to retirement ratios race cars will often have, it's actually very impressive to have a 100% race finish ratio, even with only two events. Many race cars will fail in their first race. So for this one to do two and finish them, is pretty cool. But what's even better than that is where it finished, because it had one second place and one first place. Both of its only races were podium finishes with a victory. That's remarkable for a car with such a tiny amount of power, a car which many people don't even know about. It has such great performance from its engine and clearly was a highly competitive machine because twice it got that podium and one of them was a full-on victory. Now, as far as the car's history beyond that, I can't say I know a huge amount about it. I'm sure there are Skoda super fans who really know a ton about the car. It's surely got to be one of the fastest Skodas ever built, I would imagine. And in terms of what happened to the car, ultimately, as you can see from one of the pictures in this video, it appears to have crashed, or at least something very similar to it. So I'm not sure what the story is there. But it certainly wasn't a race that it crashed in, because, as we already said, it's got a really good ratio of wins and podium finishes. So ultimately, it's not necessarily a car which brings anything radically new to the table. It's a great car, little four-speed gearbox as well, incidentally. But it's just a car which, quietly and subtly, made a pretty cool little name for itself. But it almost didn't, though, because many people don't know about it and don't know that it was that good. And yet, it was. Pretty much the definition of an unsung hero, a car which most people don't even know about, and yet one that was so successful. Pretty impressive stuff. 
But that's it overall for this pick. Of course, if you want to check out others here on the channel, you can click through in the playlist at the end to see plenty more in this series of weird and wacky cars. And not many of them are as successful as this one is. But that's it for this pick. I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.